Uh, so quick farm background, we are located just south of Redwater. Um, we run about 1.6 million kgs of uh, turkey per year. Uh, which equates to about 140,000 turkeys a year. Uh, last year, we were, had the opportunity to get into broiler production, so we maximized that and did about a quarter million kgs of that. Um, we place almost every month about 11 flocks of turkey per year and then intermingled with some broiler flocks. And uh, with our eight barns, we do have lots of flexibility when it comes to uh, what we produce. Um, we got the really... Uh, unfortunate and fortunate opportunity to rebuild our farm in 2013 we had a huge fire go through two of the main buildings and uh, in this picture you can see in 2014 we rebuilt a new barn right there and a new brooder barn which is in the middle uh, we kind of came up with the idea from uh, some BC growers to interconnect the barns from a biosecurity standpoint it is quite dangerous but uh, we thought from a stress level and practical point of view it made a lot of sense. So uh, uh, the big barn is 52,000 square feet and the other finisher barn is 44 with a 21,000 square foot brooder barn attaching the two together. So um, it's quite a unique system and I, I just love it. So um, so first with the flaws, we thought we start out with the feed. Uh, we do run a supplement program on the farm uh, in all our large turkey barns. Uh, we do try to source as much local hard red wheat just for the higher protein content for the turkeys. Um, and I'm very strict on running a shuttle slash rotation program with all the medication. Uh, I tried to do Coban, Clinicox, and we just started doing Avatech. Uh, Avatech has its unique challenges in terms of water consumption, but uh, I strongly believe in always, you know, making the bugs uh, relearn every flock. So we're really tight on that. Um, feed specs, every feed company does it differently. I try to mandate, you know, some galinate, galliacid, and starters. Um, high D organic trace rolls throughout is very critical in my opinion. And then new this year is because of the dermatitis challenge in our industry and on my farm, uh, we're going to try probiotics in all the plain feeds to try to do some competitive disadvantage with a clostridium bacteria to see if that will help instead of using pop pen all the time. And our main goal, of course, with any feeding program is legs and health. So lights, uh, lights is very critical turkeys. Um, with a huge issue with piling, especially in the finisher barns. So uh, brooding is also essential. We target 50 luxes as a minimum. One barn, we can go up to 100 luxes uh, for the first week of age and then one hour per every other day of, of dark program. The finisher barns, after the town hall last year from the U of S, we were experimenting with a brownout program instead of a darkout program. Uh, this pretty much just results in reduction of light intensity for the six hours that the lights are off. And because uh, our barns are curtain open sided with natural ventilation in the summertime, I figured that was a really good program and we've had a huge piling issue in the past. So we thought we'd try it. And I really wanted to highlight, um, there's lots of talk out there about circadian rhythms and we really can measure it with our water consumption. This is a 24 hour graph of a turkey flock with uh, in the water consumption. And you can really see when the dark period hits, it really drops in intake. And then as the lights come back on, on the sunset program, we really saw a change. So to me, it's telling me that the brownout program is giving the birds the sensation of, of uh, stop eating and drinking and resting. So to me, I think it's working and uh, we'll see how the, the future holds. So, and then of course, uh, with the new construction, LED lights have been critical. We've renovated all our barns to LED to get the extra brightness and all the, also the dimming factor. And I'm kind of a believer of the, you know, the four to 5,000 K, uh, which is a more green blue uh, spectrum of light uh, for the turkeys. But of course, everybody is different. So it's just our personal preference. Uh, the next on the list is litter. Uh, we're basically basically a shaving space farm um, I find straw kind of a headache to handle and to store so uh, we use basically shavings uh, to four to five inches deep as thick as we can get it uh, recently this is also an idea from BC oh, wrong pointer sorry um, we built a shavings cart that we pull behind the quad that helps level the shavings out to get a uniform consistency throughout the barn and uh, Usually one trailer, I said, just does about 20,000. And we try to optimize our bedding quality, like Paul was saying. 
Um, I want to see no caking. I want to see it loose. Uh, this picture is at day 35, the day we move the birds at the brooder stage. I just thought I'd show you the depth and then you can still see brand new bedding at the bottom. And then when we first started turkey farming, we always wanted to look at a way of entertaining our turkeys and also adding value. So uh, we went to this bar, uh, sorry, bale enrichment program. Uh, where we do one bale per thousand birds in all the barns we leave them in whole and they're usually gone by by week 12. so uh, the birds really enjoy them and also we get a new bedding throughout the flock and then this past year with dermatitis hitting our our farm uh, we've been experimenting with plt and uh, gold dust plus which are just two powders that we've been putting on the bedding I'm not sure yet if they're working or not. Uh, the first flock of PLT had really bad ammonia burns on the foot pads. It's acid based, so I'm not convinced, but uh, it's also a wet flock, so I don't know yet. And gold dust, the current flock has it. This actual flock right here has gold dust plus on the floor. And uh, we don't know yet. They ha they're 11 weeks old today and they're, they're doing good. So I'm happy with that. So. Um, air. I don't want to reiterate what Paul was talking about too much, but we converted to a state-of-the-art Maximus controller system, fully web-based. Um, I'm a huge believer in the five-minute timer program. We do it in all our barns, regardless of new or old. Um, it really ensures that our minimum ve ventilation is consistent and uh, it maximizes, um, I think, our bird quality. So. Um, it's kind of a rough overview. These are just very guidelines. We do mod, uh, vary it depending upon outside temperature and humidity. Uh, but the whole goal is to get the fans to 100% as fast as possible and maintain the highest static pressure that I can. So it, it is sometimes hard on the, on the fans and on the inlet, uh, especially in the winter time. But uh, we try to target just a flat 0.1 the whole year for static pressure and it varies a little bit and we use fans just unplug plug in a fan or just the controller to speed them up or slow them down to ensure that we hit um, I always like less than 60% in the brooder barn even less than that even 40 like we try to brood at like 25 to 30 percent with a higher temp because my opinion is if you lose the floor you lose the barn so the, the lower I can keep the humidity for longer periods of time the more I can save the floor and the less risk I have for disease. So those are uh, roughly what we manage for and uh, hope to achieve. So uh, next on the list of the flaws is the water. We're very fortunate in Alberta. We are on city water in uh, Sturgeon County. So it is a little bit expensive, but we do have less issues with water quality, but we do pump our water over 2000 feet throughout the farm. So I still treat with chlorine at three parts per million and acetic acid um, on a continuous uh, based on flow rate. And uh, it helps a lot, especially at, at the brooder barn, which is, yeah, like I said, 1500 to 2000 feet away from the pump. So uh, also we've been implementing uh, poultry uh, health has a flushing procedure. It's a proxyclean disinfectant PWT system. So before every flock, chicken or turkey, everything gets proxyclean for 24 hours and then a, a disinfectant for 24 hours, and it all gets flushed out at one time. And I haven't had great success with PWT early on. So what we've changed is that at the end of each flock, brooder or finishing, we flush in PWT for the 24 hours to help decalcify the nipples. Because uh, if they do get some calcium, they will, oh, sorry, um, uh, overflow over time, especially with the brooder ball inside. So, uh, and then this is just a rough picture of our brooder barn. We have two different types of systems in our brooder barn, bells and cups, because our finisher barns are all bell drinkers. So uh, uh, we just did the starter line. And I wanted to also emphasize in turkeys, uh, a lot of different guys do different things in terms of vaccination. We vaccinate twice uh, a flock, day 21, day 31, and very rigid and strict. Every flock, especially if they get moved, get vaccinated twice. And we just do it through the medicator. Um, a very simple uh, starve out procedure and it gets flushed in. So I want to make sure that every turkey maximizes their chance to get the virus all at one time. So, okay, so next on the list of flaws is space. Um, turkeys definitely need a lot more space than uh, broilers uh, would need, but we're very, uh, I definitely like a more space in my barn, especially in the brooder barns. Um, we're about 1.5 square feet per turkey. Um, chickens, 
I, the jury's out. Everybody does it differently. Uh, I'm a huge fan of 0.75 as a minimum. I don't go any tighter than that because you do risk of overproducing. Also, uh, my condemns go up. So a, a 0.75, it's, it's a very comfortable number and it's way more easy to manage and, and ventilate. Um, it, same goes for the equipment. I try to minimize and not be on the upper end of the equipment supplier's number. I always try to be on the lower end. So even like with the bells, for example, we run like 15% below what most people recommend because um, I, I, I don't want too much competition at the feed and water space. I want to make sure that everybody has an equal chance uh, to get in there and eat and drink and uh, hopefully perform better. So, so sanitation, this has been kind of a, a new uh, startup for us in the past couple of years. Um, we have been starting to foam our barns this past year. Um, this is an example of Kyle from Shippers. Uh, we picked up their system last year and not sure if it's you know there's an added value but it sure makes washing a lot easier it definitely removes a lot of the organic matter prior to disinfection and it does i think save a lot on water especially since we buy city water um, it helps a lot uh, but yeah it's 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 surprising uh, how well it pulls the grease and the organic matter off the walls um, and also with our disinfecting program we rotate like mad we rotate between six to eight products every barn gets washed with a different product every year uh, so like right now we'd be on virusid next cycle might be textural the cycle after that might be sentinel um, they're always trying to mix it up and keep the bugs guessing so um, we're really I'm a big fan of rotational programs of disinfectant also uh, new because of the dermatitis and trying something different again we're formaldehyding the floors um, after washing uh, we're using a product called profilm it's a wet formaldehyde that releases as it dries we just use a portable spray tank that you pull behind a tractor and we just spray the whole floor down and then we walk out for 24 hours so um, it's just an added measure to try to reduce the colonies and to, to keep everything under control. Uh, same thing with insecticide and rodent. Uh, I know darkling beetles are a big issue around a lot of farms. So um, again, huge rotation, uh, Tempo, Debantic, the new product, Agita Wettable. We've seen really good response from Agita Wettable and darkling beetles, like tremendous I, in my feeling. So uh, keep rotating, keep trying different things. And uh, uh, that's... That's what that anyways we do. So uh, security, security, uh, like Helen was saying, biosecurity is a huge, huge importance on every farm. Um, you know, visitor control, sign in. Um, you know, we do change your boots in every barns, you know, very, you know, to follow all HACCP uh, and welfare procedures. Uh, we want to start getting into maybe doing farm gates at all our entryways to control access. Uh, it's, you know, really important, especially with our barns being all connected like this. It's very very high likelihood if we did get a disease it would go across the whole farm but uh, there's lots going on on a farm at all times but I just want to stress in my summary that uh, systems and procedures what we found uh, especially in our early beginnings of our farming career that if we don't set up procedures and systems to follow we won't do it if we don't give the time to wash the barn we won't do it if we don't have the time to vaccinate we won't do it if we don't do those things that the birds need uh, we won't do it so we're very strict in terms of following a set of uh, every cycle it's done every way every time so we have consistent variables so if we do make a change we can monitor it and we know what happens but I really stress like it uh, to do systems on your farm and then you can, they're repeatable so you can you know even though the birds may be different every cycle in and out at least as a manager you're doing the best you can for that animal so then you can kind of eliminate that out of the equation and focus on what potential issue may be like i said earlier our goal is livability uh, our average mortality last year on a you know 13 to 17 week flock was 9.1 percent uh, on our farm um, to me, anything under 10%, I think is a, is a, is a great success rate. Like my goal at, uh, in the brooder barn is under 5% at five weeks and, uh, livability is huge. Like, like I said earlier, if you don't have live turkeys, you have, you have nothing. So, and then huge for us, especially with the E. coli, our HE vaccine is staying ahead of E. coli. That's why we double vaccinate. Um, we tend to see a huge E. coli mortality if you don't vaccinate between week seven and week 10. So staying ahead of E. coli and keeping those birds healthy is, is really, really important to us. And the reason why we designed the farm like we did after we had the fire was the stress. Moving turkeys with a trailer 
in the middle of winter at minus 30 is a huge stress load. So now you can kind of see in the back of the barn, there's an overhead door right here that goes to the next barn. So it allows us to just open the door, have similar climates between both the brooder barn and the finisher barn. And there's that environmental stress load is I think reduced immensely. So, um, it's, it's a great system and uh, we're very fortunate to have it. And then in the other picture here, it's just some bale enrichment. Um, you're seeing these birds are about, I think they're nine or 10 weeks old. And they, they just shred the bales like cattle. Like it's unbelievable. The bale just disappears in a few weeks. Like it's, it's very impressive. And, uh, and then our overall goal, I think is to supply consumers with a good quality product and, uh, and the best product we can.